Speaking, eating, and breathing are natural everyday functions that many of us take for granted. But for millions living like this, they are impossibilities. For these patients, the tracheostomy tube that has been surgically inserted into their throat is the only way they can breathe. And while it is medically necessary, the complications associated with this technique greatly affect a patient's quality of life. Tracheostomy tubes and ventilators have long been used for a variety of health issues. Healthcare professionals have for years watched their patients and families endure the hardships that are a result of this life-saving procedure. In my practice, what I will typically see are patients that are post-trauma that have required a ventilator for support after their injuries. Uh, the other large group of patients that I see are patients with end-stage uh, pulmonary disease, some people that have cardiac disease. Uh, we see people that have neurologic disease, which may include things like ALS, people that have had strokes with impairment in their swallow and such problems. When patients aren't able to communicate, it creates huge frustration for them and their family members. Um, there's a lot of psychological impact. It, it affects their uh, quality of life. They lose some independence. They have a hard time being able to communicate with nursing staff just to express their basic wants and needs. Currently, patients requiring mechanical ventilation account for approximately 33% of all patients admitted to the ICU. And this number is expected to rise as the baby boomer generation ages. This will put even more stress on our heavily burdened healthcare system with estimated costs to exceed $60 billion by the year 2020. I have seen that there has been an increase in the number that are chronic respiratory failure type patients because of underlying cardiac disease or pulmonary disease that leads to respiratory insufficiency. And the cost of caring for these patients is anywhere from two to three times as much per day as it is for other patients that are in the rehab unit. There is a much larger investment of respiratory therapy time, uh, which may vary somewhat depending upon what the underlying illness is for the patients. But in 1984, a man with muscular dystrophy changed the lives of patients with tracheostomies forever. David Muir suffered respiratory complications and had to rely on a ventilator and tracheostomy in order to survive. As a result, air no longer passed through his vocal cords and verbal communication became impossible. As time passed, David found himself becoming increasingly depressed. With his dad's help, David began searching for a solution. After several attempts, he created a one-way valve that when placed on his tracheostomy tube, redirected air through his vocal cords and allowed him to speak. David's invention did exactly what he hoped it would. It gave him his voice back. Years of independent clinical research have shown that the Passy Muir valve, also known as the PMV, does so much more. The valve also improves other important functions such as swallowing, coughing, managing secretions, and other pulmonary functions, all which greatly improve a patient's recovery and quality of life. With use of the Passy Mirror Valve, you're able, we're able to help patients who have trachs in be, to be able to redirect the airflow. Um, to make a more normalized, closed respiratory system that allows the vocal cords to vibrate, um, giving them communication and voice and speech, which they had lost previously. Um, it also restores sensation, which improves secretion, clearance, cough strength, swallowing. And we started to see for ourselves firsthand the success that we were achieving through the use of the Passimure speaking valve in our ability to wean patients from the ventilator um, more quickly and in turn to be able to wean patients from their tracheostomy tube as well. At Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital in Lincoln, Nebraska, David's valve has become the standard of care for tracheostomized and ventilator dependent patients. We have a uh, standing admission order where we implement a co-evaluation with respiratory therapy and speech therapy and begin our evaluation process within 48 hours of admission. So oftentimes patients with trachs will come to us from another hospital 
and um, we may be the first ones then that get that opportunity to start the use of the Passimur valve. Rehabilitative technologies like the Passimur valve are utilized with patients of all ages, including babies as young as three days old. We try to use it as soon as we possibly can because we know the sooner we use it, the better effect we have on their ability to begin those skills of communication and speech and feeding. And by using it early, we can help prevent some of those delays that we may have um, in those areas by waiting too long to begin use of it. Justin got his trach when he was three months old, and we, he'd been intubated his whole life. To see Justin running and to see him breathing and talking and telling, you know, stories, it's, it, it just warms your heart. It's my baby, you know? Mom, what the animal? Mom needs an animal? Okay. Yeah. Use of David's valve early in recovery has been found to reduce health care costs. When normal physiology is restored, patients recover faster and with fewer complications. This reduces the use of medical resources and length of hospital stays. The um, passing mirror valve uh, has been helpful in that it does facilitate communication with the patients, uh, ability for them to relay to their care providers what it is that they need done or other complaints that can be addressed in a much more rapid fashion. This does make for better patient care. Does that feel okay? Yep. Feels good. One way that we measure the success of our ability to wean patients both from the ventilator and or tracheostomy tubes is the use of a national database with other organizations that have long-term acute care hospitals. And that's what we use to benchmark and to set our goals. Typically, for example, um, to be able to wean at least 50% of our ventilator patients completely off the vent. And to do so in less than 20 days is what our standard is. And we consistently exceed that. Um, last fiscal year, for example, we weaned 62% of our ventilator patients and we did so in an average of 12 and a half days which is exceptional and we firmly believe that that is a result of incorporating the Passimur valve into our protocols. There was a time when this was considered the highest quality of life for a patient with a tracheostomy but thanks to the determination of one man many people who desperately hope for a sense of normalcy can begin to live life to the fullest again. Just being able to communicate the passing mirror valve makes a difference. It makes me feel like I'm more a part of humanity. Said valve goes in in the morning and that tray cuff comes down, I can actually say good morning. For over 25 years, the passing mirror valve has changed the standard of care and medical outcomes for this patient population. Yeah. What is it? You tell them. Help it. The PMV is an inexpensive, safe therapy that works 99% of the time with the appropriate patients without causing any complications, and in fact by reducing complications of the procedure. This is rare indeed for a product to provide so many benefits at such a low cost while also saving the hospitals thousands of dollars per patient. Passy Muir continues to promote the use of David's valve through education, Doctors, clinicians, patients, and families are encouraged to learn more about the Passy Muir Valve through free educational opportunities offered on the company website. David's commitment to helping tracheostomy and ventilator dependent patients to restore more function and normalcy in their lives is an ongoing commitment of the company. Through research and development of rehabilitative technologies for speech and swallowing therapies, everyone at Passy Muir is dedicated to helping improve people's quality of life and take David's mission very personally. The employees of Passy Muir, the medical professionals, and the patients who have benefited from David's determination and innovation are grateful to David for never giving up. To learn more, visit PassyMuir.com.